Hello again guys and welcome back to Rage Gaming and more Necromancer. I made my first pit focus build recently and it achieved a tier 100 no problem, but I felt it just had issues with survivability. That's not necessarily an issue at tier 100 or below, it was completely fine, but things steeply increase as we go even single tier levels up at that point. To go from a tier 100 to a tier 110 is not remotely as easy as say a 70 to 80. When we start to push more serious levels, you need more than just output with a bit of survivability, you need to min-max it. With that, you'll need to achieve certain things, like having enough raw damage reduction to tank the echo hits. If you're unaware, in the pit boss fights, there are three echoes. You start with one, but then there's a second and third one, all happening at the same time as you progress the boss health. Now, the worst ones are easily the Lilith mechanics, the ones that are doing things like blood waves, which suck to avoid. And if you're going to die to a single tick of damage from any of these, it's really painful. And that's basically a given when we're talking over a tier 100. We need at least some buffer to allow for a couple mistakes to recover. To deal with these echoes and their strange damage, you can't rely on any damage reduction. I can't apply a decrepify to these things, so that means I'm missing out on what would be an extra 26% damage reduction, which is huge. The only thing that really works for that is raw true damage reduction that's applied to yourself at all times. Examples of that will be say this uber unique, the 20% damage reduction that I get by just wearing it. The incredible hardened bones, that's a 25% just for being a necromancer with minions. There's also the golem blood upgrade, upgrade 1, where the golem takes 30% of the damage that you would normally take, which could save you. Other aspects do exist, like might when you use basic attacks, or you could just flat out increase your overall health so that you can tank that hit that would normally kill you. So with this new setup, I'm way more survivable. I'm able to take the hits that were killing me before, which gives me that slight buffer if I do make a mistake during the minutes that I could be fighting a pit boss. They could take some serious time, and if you do die to like something that clips you after you put loads of effort in and nearly got it, it's very upsetting. But it's not the only thing I've been maxed. My output is staggeringly improved compared to the first pit build. Before I was hitting say 3 billion or so, now I'm hitting bursts of 20 billion but that's still less than I can do with this setup. Here's me with the same setup hitting a 30 billion hit against an even higher tier boss. So as you can see, I'm clearing these higher tiers with eight minutes left on the clock. So that's a lot of room to push higher tiers if you want to with a build of this design. So let's talk about a few of the important updates and changes I've made. First, if you're unaware, there's a simple trick you can do to have not one, but two elixirs at the same time. As Necromancer's pushing the hardest content, you gotta be using the Holy Bolt elixir. It sometimes takes your damage and bursts it out based on how many minions are active and charged up at the time, as well as seemingly the current percent of damage increase you have at that moment. But that means we have to use our one elixir to have that bonus. We can't put it into something like more health or other survivability. Turns out that's not true. There's a side quest you can do in the southwestern city of Gear Cole, and it's called Pinch of Poison. Very simply, you go hunt down some scorpions and bring back the items they drop, and that's it. Now you've unlocked a recipe for a unique quest elixir you need to go to the actual alchemist to craft called Anti Venin. This quest elixir has its own tab and can be crafted and then used for a nice 15% max life increase. Now, because it's a quest buff, you can also use a normal elixir elixir like holy bolts at the same time. They'll both apply and work. This is really good. Next, you'll notice that I'm no longer running grasping veins on any of my offensive slots. As I explained last time, it was just the best option outside of Inner Calm. The issue with Inner Calm is that while it offers a massive 30% times increase to your damage, you need to first stand still for three seconds before it even begins giving you that. While not impossible, it's very difficult to achieve that in pit boss fights where you gotta move around so much to avoid the mechanics. Meanwhile, Grasping Veins basically gives you a 25% crit chance increase, which is certainly nice, but it's not great for a whole offensive aspect slot. My theory is that because you're applying a debuff to enemies rather than a buff to yourself, the minions aren't getting that benefit for the crit damage part. So that's why I dropped that slot to make room for an uber unique. The uber unique is obviously Shaco's or Harlequin Crest, the helmet. This provides you hefty maximum life, cooldown reduction, and all stats, which by the way, does matter. Even just a little bit of all stats has pushed something like my dexterity a little bit higher so that I'm getting the bonus of say, Ruin here or other rare nodes late in the Paragon board. And it is making an important difference. Also, obviously, it's got the huge 20% damage reduction, which is really helping because it's stopping the echo mechanics from killing me instantly. Also, the extra four levels to everything means things like Corpse Tendrils here and Blood Mist. They have shorter cooldowns at a baseline, which means I'm able to use them way more often, and that is just a big deal. 
Also, because I've got extra levels in Decrepify, I'm getting over 2% extra damage reduction compared to before, so we're up to 26.6% less damage from all enemies as we're applying Decrepify to everything. And also the slow gets really hefty at 60%. So it's quite a lot for one single slot. And because I wasn't like really getting value out of Inner Calm or Grasping Veins, I think it's actually a really good trade. Further, as I'll explain in the Paragon board section, I've made some serious changes to the layout and where I spent my points. Outside of build changes, I've also started to play more aggressively in the pits, especially the boss fights. You achieve the most damage when you stay near your minions to give them the Hellbent Commander buff. The issue with that is it means being near the boss, which could mean being cleaved if you stand in the wrong place, or maybe the echo mechanics become more of a threat because you're too close. I'm having to time my Blood Mist with both iframes and DPS in mind because of that, just so I can push the burst as hard as I possibly can. Now obviously I've achieved some pretty casual over tier 110 clears with a lot of time left so I do think I could push this to 120 and above even with this very same setup but I'm just thinking about the future as well. If we really want to push those numbers towards like 130 or really groundbreaking stuff like that I think you're going to require not just perfect gameplay since there's going to be no room to get hit by everything but at those higher tiers I think also the damage reduction is going to be much less valuable as well. When things are one-shotting you even when you commit so hard to damage reduction there's no point even using it but that's a problem for a later day obviously this setup is obviously strong and i don't even have the perfect gear by the way everything i'm wearing right now is masterworked at 8 out of 12 tiers i'm not at 12 out of 12 on anything and also my most important slots like the golem mastery on the chest that could be at plus six it's at plus four Hellbent Commander could be at plus six or even seven. So my gear is far from perfectionism and I am achieving very high results all the same. I think that's really good and should be hopefully important to you guys if you're more of a casual player. So let's actually cover the build with all of that explained. Okay, for everything that I'm going to talk about that I haven't really changed, I'm going to go pretty quick on since we talked about it in the recent video. Starting with the Book of the Dead, skill to Warriors, Reapers, upgrade 2. Obviously, we still want that, the corpse forming, and that weird bug with the cooldown reduction occurring. Skill to Mages is still Shadow for the massive damage improvement that provides, and you need Shadow Mages to get Shadow Blight stacks from your minions. Golem, Blood, upgrade 2. We want as much damage as possible. Yes, upgrade 1's incredible damage reduction, but at a certain point, if you're not killing the boss, it's a problem. In the skill tree, we've made some minor changes to where we spend points, but let me just run through it. Your first two points can be anywhere. It doesn't matter at all. It's just to get you to the next tree. We're going to max out Hued Flesh. And as you guys let me know in the comments in a recent video, the next point is wasted on any of these calls. You might as well have three extra maximum essence. It's not a big deal, but it is the most efficient, best thing you can do. On the next tree, we have three points in Skeletal Warrior Mastery, one in Grim Harvest and maxed out Fuel by Death, one point in Corpse Explosion, just so we can get the blighted to trigger off our blood mist in the aspect section i'll explain that we are using corpse explosion so you do need to spend the points at a minimum you want one point for blood mist and go to ghastly but because i had leftover points with the current setup that i have because as you can see i've dropped spiked armor entirely it means i could get two more points into blood mist than normal which again slightly reduces the cooldown and we want to be blood misting whenever possible so that's that tree onto the next one we have decrepify at maxed out five out of five this gives you more damage reduction and also heavily improves the slow, so good for the clearing part, but the DR is the most important thing here. Obviously, we're going to Abhorrent, though, for the CDR. We've maxed out skill to Mage Mastery, Death's Approach, Death's Embrace, and, of course, Amplify Damage, as usual. On the next tree, though, we have one point into Corpse Tendrils, and we bring that to Plagued, as usual, for the Vulnerable Gen. Again, we're taking Necrotic Carapace. The Fortified Generation we get passively because of that is insane. We're still taking Army of the Dead with just one point because we do not need Supreme. It's over kill it's a waste of a point maxing out golem mastery inspiring leader and hellbent commander as usual finally the key passive yep shadow blight as always this brings us to the paragon which has changed pretty impactfully with the way that i've rooted things I talked about last time if I worked in something like the Bone Graph board, I could get even more health. I'm still considering that, but it is a big commitment of points and could be a DPS loss where I really don't want to give it up. So this is what I've done. Here's my starter board and how I spend my points. Compared to before, I've got 2% extra max life here. That's pretty nice. But it is still the Amplify Glyph in the same setup. Again, I used to run Control here. Now I run Amplify because Control doesn't really help boss killing and the clear of the dungeon itself in the pit is completely fine, so I don't need it. Second board it is still cult leader and we're still running the dead razor uh, glyph on this one you should always run dead razor on the board with cult leader because dead razor provides a little bit of bonus to minion related magic nodes and as you can see this is where they are in any case i made a change to the path that i took i used to go up and over i found that going under to the left 
is slightly more efficient on the points, so I saved a couple points there. This is where I spend the points, so let's go to the next board. Again, still hulking monstrosity with the same glyph, corporeal, which is going to give you a big bonus to magic nodes within range. Importantly, Golem damage. Again, instead of coming across like this as before, what I've done is I've come down this way. This has snagged me a little bit more points or room to get a couple more magic nodes, again for more golem damage. I'm trying to squeeze out that little bit more output, and this is how we're doing it. Because I've come under and changed the way that I've gone through the board, it means I've lost intelligence because there's a couple over here that I was using. This allows me to come over to the right to get more golem armor, which isn't that important, but to get more intelligence. This means I'm very close to this rare node over here, a big golem damage increase, and there are even more magic nodes around it that provide more. I would like an extra point here if I could just barely snipe this. I'm trying to find a way to do it. That's where I spend my points on this board, still getting borrowed strength, and there is actually some damage increases while golem active here that I'm looking at, and again, trying to find a way to sneak in. On the next board, you'll find things are a little bit different because we're coming to the right now to get to the next board. This board is still sent of death though, and the glyph here is still golem, maxed out for as much willpower as possible to give us as much golem damage as we can get. It's very important that the golem glyph is on a willpower board and again Son of Death is a willpower board. So we come through the bottom here, snag everything in the points that we can get, snagging ruin as well since we're actually getting that secondary bonus, the extra damage to enemies that are healthy. But at this point we come to the left for the next board which is still flesh eater and it is still gravekeeper on the flesh eater board. This gives a bonus to all rare nodes within range so we are getting a bit of extra damage to elites and a little bit more resistance to all elements. Previously, I was coming out of this board through Stifle, and while damage to injured enemies and crit strike damage is good, it was pretty costly on the points to make it all the way to the next board. What this means is instead of having Stifle and those type of things, I was able to save some points back on the Hulking Monstrosity board to get a little bit more Golem damage, to come over here and get the Infused Golem. And then, with the less points that I had, I needed a shorter route to another board, and this one right here was the cleanest way I found, requiring only five points to make it. And this is the same dump board as before, Bloodbath. Bloodbath has some rare nodes to do with Fortify, so why not? And it's also a reasonably good dexterity board, so I've dumped as many points as I can into this for more crit strike damage. But I've actually taken a couple out here, because while there's more dex nodes on this board, they all require like one point to then reach it, one point to then reach it, is very inefficient, so that's where I save some more points as well. But yeah, I've been irking out, squeezing out the points as best I can, but I still want more. There's this magic node here, there's more potential with extra damage while golems are active, and I'm just trying to work out what's going to be the most cost-effective thing to sacrifice to achieve this. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. This brings us to the big one as usual, the gear section. Starting with aspects, I'm going to be quick as we can. My helmet is obviously Halicon Crest, means we now have Occult somewhere else. Occult can go on your boots, so that's where I've slapped it. Previously on the boots, I had Explosive Mist, which I put on my gloves, which essentially has removed grasping veins from the roster. So we got the Shaco on the helm, we've still got hardened bones on the chest, now we have Explosive Mist on the gloves, Blood Getters is on the legs still, and now we have Occult down on the boots for the extra warriors and mages. Still on the two-hand side, of course, we've got Blighted for the massive damage increase that provides. And on the amulet, it's still on Yielding Commander, which I just cannot find a top roll for to save my life. For the rings, we have Reanimation and Frenzied Dead, as you should expect. We can't live without these. Very big damage bonuses. So that's how I've reorganized things. For the affixes then, we can't do anything to the uber unique. On the chest, we have Intel, Max Life, and Golem Mastery. The most important thing on the chest is Golem Mastery. You can get, I believe, up to plus six on this. So as we start to go into like tier 120 plus in the pits, you need perfect gear. My plus four here is great. I need a plus six. On the gloves, as usual, attack speed, crit strike chance, and then the skill to mage mastery. On the legs, it's intelligence, armor, mage mastery. Why have I got so much armor here? In fact, my tempering here is terrible and I'm going to try re-roll it. Now I've found out even more money. Because I took off my helmet for this uber unique, I no longer have an affix with armor on my helmet. So I needed armor somewhere else. I enchanted my legs to get armor on it and then kind of wasted a temper slot and it even doubled up the armor. You can see how I'm over the cap and I don't even have any spiked thorns in the skill tree right now. So I've got a little bit too much armor right now, but this is how I've achieved the cap of armor because you have to maintain that. On the boots, it's the same as before. Intel max life movement speed. On the weapon, Intel max life damage. That's just the best setup. For the amulet, 
this is still a bit messy for me. Max life, attack speed, hellbent commander is what I've got. I'd rather have crit strike chance instead of the max life. Though I have so much attack speed at this point, you could consider dropping the attack speed. As long as you have 100% total, you're good to go. So your attack speed bonus plus the minion attack speed bonus plus 45% from Frenzy Dead. So I'm over that right now. More attack speed is still good, but as you hopefully know by now, Cult Leader gives you extra damage per 20% of attack speed bonus the minions have, and it caps at 100%. So once you've got the 100%, more than that doesn't give any more to Cult Leader, so that's why you're aiming for the 100% and not worrying about beyond that. So there's some slight inefficiencies for me to clean up here. The most important thing here is Hellbent Commander levels. Like I said, I think you can get plus 7 total, so the greater affix and tempering hits on it, that is your goal here. On the rings though, it is pretty much the same as the gloves. Crit Strike Chance, Attack Speed, Max Life, that's the goal for both of them though on my other ring i happen to have intel max life quick straight chance because yeah i'm good on attack speed once you're good on attack speed you don't need more that brings us to our tempering. We can't temper the uber unique. So for the secondary temper, you want cops, tendrils, and decrepify size increase. I believe it caps out 100%. So you want to get as close to that or at that if you can. I'm just below it with cops, tendrils on my chest and gloves. And then my decrepify, I believe has actually achieved it. Yeah, we're over 100% on decrepify with the legs and the boots. For the other thing, it's what you need. In this case, I've overkilled on total armor. So I might swap that to max life, but you need to make sure you're at your armor cap. So that could be at least one total armor on the pieces. Otherwise, it's pretty much just max life on defensive slots, like on the legs. And offensively, you can see that it's golem damage every single time. For the boots, you're just looking for some movement speed increase. I have after killing an elite, but raw movement speed would probably be better. Now on the weapon, I've got golem damage. You absolutely want that. I've also got minion attack speed and it hit the temper prop. Once you're over 100% joint attack speed, you don't need more. So I've got a little bit too much here. So you could argue for the skeleton mage double proc if you've got your attack speed cap. Otherwise, it is minion attack speed. On the jewelry, though, it's all the same. Golem active cooldown reduction and golem damage. You want that on every piece, so your rings and your amulet, like I've done here. Finally, for master working, same as always, golem mastery as high as you can get it, and hellbent commander, those are your most important priorities. Under that, I would probably temper my weapon first, and then golem damage, golem active CDR, and crit strike chance. Those will probably be my other priorities. Also, I've definitely shown it at this point, it's max life in all of your equipment. In your weapon, it's extra vulnerable damage. And then it's whatever you need in your jewelry to achieve the max out 70% cap of resistance in everything. Very quick how to play this because obviously I just want to make sure people understand. You're stacking up your Shadow Blight key passive by letting your Shadow Mages attack and using Blood Mist to generate corpses and pop them for corpse explosion. The Blighted Corpse Explosion stack up your Shadow Blight and when you hit 10 stacks, that's like a big burst of damage for you. At the same time, you have Corpse Eater. Every time you consume a corpse by spamming something like Raise Skeleton, you get a stack. At 5 stacks, you get a big damage bonus. So you want your Shadow Blight 10 stacks and your 5 Corpse Eater stacks to be triggered at the same time. Outside of that, you maintain your Decrepify. You spam Corpse Tendrils to stun the target. And when you've got all your damage buffs going, you pop Army of the Dead for a huge burst of damage and spam Golem Slams during that window. Ideally, your Holy Bolts would proc at the same time as that, and that is how I'm achieving the 30 billion hits. It's not that complicated, but maintaining it and getting everything to line up right when you focus on mechanics at the same time that could one-shot you, it's a bit harder, so it's worth practicing this. But yeah, there you have it. That's my updated pit pushing build with way more damage reduction, health and general survivability, but also with way more output than before at the same time. I'm pretty happy with this. And like I said at the start, I think you could easily achieve a tier 120 plus with this. But I do think the step beyond that towards say 130s and so on might involve more output as a focus and less worrying about survivability since the echoes are going to kill you anyway, no matter how much DR or survivability you have. Unless you're a barbarian, that is. I do wonder if they're going to rebalance the pit bosses at all, because people really don't like the echoes one-shotting them. For now, though, I hope the build is useful. Until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.